This is a list of every single kaiju in the Pacific Rim franchise. I'm talking movies, video games, books, comics, anime, the lot. In this vid, I'm going to list them in terms of category. So this vid is in part power ranking, in part a timeline of attack. Now I gotta be honest, this vid was kind of on the back burner until I saw all the people that leapt on the Jaeger vid, which shows that there's plenty of interest in this franchise yet. So the Jaegers have got marks, the Kaiju have got the Serizawa scale, a method of classification based on size, toxicity, strength, and so forth. Now technically, there is no category one. Nope. The scale starts at two. Number two. <laughs> but I'm lumping all the others into a category imaginatively titled and let's go weak to strong and start with the Rippers. So in Pacific Rim the Black, they were dog-like mini kaiju. And I use the word mini lightly, as compared to humans, they were still massive, like the size of a horse, a massive horse, a massive horse dog, a massive carnivorous horse dog dog that flies, no. They're scavengers feeding off of whatever they happen to find in their territory, working in coordinated patterns to corner and kill their prey. The Rippers also appear able to cooperate with humans, although that might be down to kaiju ticks, which we'll come back to in a sec. Now these guys themselves often got preyed upon by larger kaiju, but were still a huge threat to humans, as Brianna Taylor found out. Her name was Brianna, right? <laughs> I could also talk about Otachi's baby right here, but it is essentially the same as Otachi, just a hideously underdeveloped version as it was born premature, dragging these floppy back legs along behind it, still covered in animotic fluid from the womb, still connected at the umbilical cord, which ultimately proved to be its undoing. But even though it's still in the fetal stage, it's still big enough to swallow a human male adult whole. But luckily for Hannibal, its teeth were still undeveloped too, and that's how he survived. Speaking of Hannibal, Baby was the nickname given to this mini kaiju engineered in a test tube, so to speak, by Hannibal Chow and this mad scientist woman working for him. There were actually three of these, if memory serves, and they were more than a match for Joshua Griffin and Mech Star's mini Jaegers. But some would say that these are even more powerful. These are kaiju ticks, not these. And side note, I didn't include these because I didn't know if these were creations of the precursors or just naturally occurring parasites, but these were used by the sisters of the kaiju to bring boy under their control. But this thing can reportedly bring kaiju as powerful as a category three to submission, potentially giving the bearer of these control of an army of immensely powerful creatures. Okay, onto the kaiju good and proper now. The first of which was Trespasser, who ran right across San Francisco for six whole days before the military and air forces managed to bring it down. You used using conventional ordnance and tactical nuclear weaponry, and it wound up leaving a trail of destruction 35 miles long. Its emergence began with an earthquake measuring 7.1 on the Richter scale, and it traveled underwater to emerge near the Golden Gate Bridge before rampaging not only through San Francisco, but also surrounding cities like Sacramento and others. It took three nuclear missiles to kill it, but obviously the blast caused so much collateral damage that Oakland and much of the Bay Area was nearly entirely destroyed. After its death, the military gathered its remains, displayed the skull, and studied the body parts, using them to create the Serizawa scale. At this stage, people just thought, wow, that was weird, but it probably won't happen again, right? Right? And went back to normalcy for the next six months, before Hundun breached at night during an apocalyptic tropical storm in Manila in the Philippines. The oh no, not this shit again feeling that this attack must have provoked must have been sickening. Like, anyway, we didn't get to see a whole lot of Hundun, but the model looks like this. The third attack was Kaisep on the 1st of June 2014, which attacked Carbo in, in Mexico. This thing was a huge devil horned beast that we can tell was at least comparable in size to this aircraft carrier. Interestingly, this depiction doesn't have horns, so either they were blasted off in the searing heat of nuclear fire or cut off posthumously to facilitate transport. Or Inconsistency. We don't know how many nukes it took to take this guy down, but we do know that it destroyed most of the city's inhabitable areas, which might have been even more damage than the kaiju inflicted itself. Good job, military men. Then it was Sizzur on September 2nd, 2014, which hit Sydney, Australia. It was first depicted as a quadruped, but then later as a bipedal, more dragon-like beast. The first version had floppy dog-like ears and a winged membrane between its arms and back. I would have loved to have seen this guy gliding around. The first nuclear strike to hit this guy only slowed him down, showing that he was already stronger than the kaiju that came before. It was another kaiju that took the military several days to bring to a halt, with them successfully luring it to an isolated area in a national park before hitting it with an unspecified number of nukes, which eventually brought it down. It was this attack that inspired Jasper Schoenfeld to create the Jaeger program after he noticed his young son playing with robot toys. Oh, you know what? I 
got a great idea. But it was also this attack that claimed the lives of veteran Jaeger pilot Chunk Hansen's wife and possibly his son, if I remember correctly. Not this son, the good one, I guess. Burp, 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 burp. What the fuck is going on there? The site of Scissor's death was also where they built the first part of the anti-kaiju defense wall, I guess in a kind of symbolic gesture. The fifth kaiju to make landfall was Karloff in April 2015. Given its name due to the resemblance with, well, yeah, yeah, you can work that out for yourself. A visually distinctive and notably thin and long-limbed and long-headed beast. It was detected making its way for Vancouver, so the PPDC threw caution to the wind and threw their prototype brawler Yukon into the path of the kaiju. And although it was overpowered by the raw strength of the monster, the monster was eventually killed with a blow to the face. Oh, oh. This guy was originally designed with a second mouth in its chest, but Del Toro deemed it to push the creature in a more like obscene direction and had it removed. Breach Wars officially did Cat 1s, referring to Trespasser as a Cat 1, and also a rupture, which I can't find many pictures of. Now it's said that the first wave of kaiju were actually scouts, and the next wave were actually the exterminators. Armed with the knowledge, knowledge gained from the first wave, the precursors stepped up their game and sent in the cat twos. I mean, they didn't step it up that much, because uh, the first one was Kame-san from Tales from the Drift. Like, what is this thing saying? Raru! Raru! Which was kind of like this squid thing. It would literally hug things to death. Oh, Raru. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what else to say about it. Again, it's not officially a cat too, but to me it just about scrapes in there. Just. The first to be officially categorized category two was Oni Baba, another of the most visually distinctive kaiju. It attacked Tokyo in May 2016, with its four legs and two large claws that can deliver 50,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. It also has two smaller arms that it carries up under its throat. It has toxic barbs which line its thick armored plating, and that armor is almost impenetrable on its back, but reportedly thinner around the neck and underbelly, and obviously where it meets at the joints, I guess. He's not as aggressive as the other kaiju. Being thrown into an inherently stressful situation, the behavior exhibited is actually defensive rather than aggressive, but obviously equally destructive. Also gonna add Meathead to the cat twos. Now almost nothing is known about this guy. In fact, I thought he was the same beast as Kaisep, as it only featured on the cover from Tales from Year Zero, where it was shown here in a battle with Horizon Brave. Now we know that Horizon Brave was launched in 2015 and active up until at least 2019, so that makes it very likely, although not a certainty, that it emerged from the breach around the time of the other cat twos. We can also deduce that because Horizon Brave was the Chinese Jaeger, I'm gonna say this thing attacked Taiwan. Is Taiwan actually Chinese? Ooh, controversial! He had Otachi-style pincers on his tail. And his big weakness was Donkey Punch! Someone also made a little plushie of him. Oh, I love it! Tengu was a scrapped kaiju from an early draft of the script, but I thought was worth mentioning anyway it reportedly had dozens of heads resembling that of a viper and it fought tacit ronin in odaiba japan and managed to breach the lightweight frame of the jaeger which was more built for like speed and agility anyway before tacit managed to spray it with coolant which froze the kaiju solid reckoner was probably a cat too attacking hong kong in 2016 and reportedly being the first kaiju to require two jaegers to take it down it incapacitated Cherno Alpha, leaving Horizon Brave to fight it alone. Horizon looks kind of sad here, don't you think? He's like, uh, don't really want to kill Kaiju anymore. Now I really wanted to know what Reckoner looked like, so I hired an artist. I told him to take into account every single minute detail known about the Kaiju. I gave him detailed reference images. Rah! And just a little over three months later, he came up with this. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the true face of Reckoner revealed. The Jaegers killed it by throwing it into a nuclear power station. As usual. Its blood and guts and ooze infected the surrounded area before it was dismembered in what must have been the greatest black market free-for-all the world has ever seen. Everybody, free lizard bits! I imagine people swarming over it like ants and then and then heaving off like huge chunks, like several times their own body weight. For the queen! Most memorably though, the skull ended up being used as a temple for the kaiju cultists known as the Sisters of the Kaiju. I saw an artist's impression of the interior of this temple and it was like, it was nicer than the United Nations building. ITAC's official category was never known, but seeing as it came out of the breach on July 21st, 2016, which was after Onibaba, but only two weeks before Ragnarok, it's pretty safe to say that this guy came out of the breach right smack bang in the middle of Cat 2 season, and therefore was a Cat 2 himself. Kesol. Physically speaking, it was a six-armed beast, four of which tipped with these humongous curved blades, all glowing with bioluminescent energy, which was also being emitted from its mouth, through the muscles of its neck, down inside the cavity within its chest. It had more neon lighting than a f 
than gaming PC. It has more neon lighting than Cyberpunk 2077. It has more neon lighting than, oh, my knee hurts. Its upper body is little more than a skeletal frame and its skin is pitch black. The top of its head is a single narrow horn that's spear-like and curves upward, just for making those headbutts extra choppy. It used its bulk and weight to ram the lightweight tacit ronin and its massive claws to rip into its armor, and it took the assistance of Coyote Tango to eventually overpower the kaiju, distracting him for long enough for tacit to get its kill on and split it in half. Only two weeks later, Ragnarok was one of the most humanoid kaiju ever seen in the franchise, being overtly bipedal with four long arms that can somehow like become six with machete-like blades that I first assumed were made of bone, Ragnarok possesses a thin and skeletal-like facial appearance, featuring an elongated and narrow jawline with two sets of front teeth. I imagine him talking like <coughs> On the top of his head, there are four hair-like tentacles, whose purpose is unknown apart from making him look more like Steven Seagal. <coughs> This guy is too much for Victory Alpha and is eventually killed by Tacit Ronin, which uses his insane arm blades to split the creature in half. I'll link my Tales from the Drift video down below where I go through that in much more detail, so check that out. I'm also going to lump Hardship in with the Cat 2s. He did have a lot in common with Mutivor, which was a Cat 4, but he also had a lot in common with one of the earliest Kaiju Hundun. Plus the fact that he was taken down by Romeo Blue, which was a Mark 1 Jaeger, my theory is that he was an earlier evolution of Mutivor, with the precursors taking what they'd learned from this fail attempt and making a number of improvements to create Mutivor later. The hybrid kaiju seen in Pacific Rim the Black were apparently Category 2 as well, being fairly small in stature by kaiju standards, but you know, that doesn't mean that they can't f*** you up with these massive claws and blade-like teeth. Now, they were somehow created by and controlled by the sisters of the kaiju, but no one knows exactly how. Bunyip Man suggested that they were a hybridization of human and kaiju DNA, but ooh. visually, they have similarities to multiple breeds of kaiju, suggesting that they are hybrids of kaiju breeds. Apparently, it's been agreed that the kaiju form of boy is also a cat too because of the similar size and stature to these hybrids. But I really think that he would have eventually evolved into something larger, even if it's, you know, only down to plot armor. Breach Wars had Shatter Tongue, which is kind of a weird name, don't you think? Like, does it have a tongue that shatters? How do tongues shatter? Wouldn't they squish? Does it freeze its tongue and then shatter it? Oh, I don't know. Does it freeze and then shatter its opponent's tongues? I don't get it. Anyway, it's pretty brightly colored with these pink bony protrusions that kind of do look like feathers, actually. It seems to have some sort of sack under its neck, so maybe it can spit some sort of fluid. Who knows? Androp was a Cat 2 design that I really like. It looks more lightweight than many of the other kaiju, but it, but it can walk both on all fours and on its hind legs when it needs to use its arms to strike with its claws. There was also one called Raw Shock. We had this kind of bioluminescent mohawk. Other than that, not all that distinctive. The first Cat 3 recorded was Yamarashi's attack on California in 2017. Yamarashi at the time was the largest kaiju to have ever emerged from the breach, weighing 2,500 tons of awesome according to Newt Geyser. As far as I'm aware, the only depiction that's ever been of this guy was Newt's forearm tattoo, but we do know that the Pacific Rim novelization referred to it as Gypsy Danger's first kaiju kill. That's about it. After this, Wraith made landfall in 2018 before traveling north of Japan and through the Sea of Oktosk toward Russia before being intercepted and killed by nuclear powerhouse Cherno Alpha. It was said to be turtle-like in appearance, only with a long neck that squirmed with fleshy tendrils. Clawhook was the next kaiju to emerge in July 2019 and was Gypsy's next mission, with the Mark III Jaeger taking the kaiju down as it attacked San Diego. Let's throw in a simulated kaiju, one from the Jaeger Training Academy, where Yancey and Raleigh Beckett were doing combat and tactic drills in Gypsy Danger. Now, it's not known whether Verocitor was based on an actual kaiju or whether it was a complete fabrication, and we will probably never know. My guess is that it was an amalgamation of traits that had been seen in kaiju up till that point. So it makes sense to me that this would be around a Cat 3. It seemed to be a quadruped that had long, thin limbs and was covered in long dorsal spikes, as well as a long, thin tail. The pilot siblings used the microwave bombarder of Gypsy's nuclear reactor, burning the kaiju from the inside out. All the same stuff applies to Bilobog, a simulated crustacean-like beast with a wide and thick shell, which attacks with its pincers, but also a razor-sharp tongue that it uses to smash into Gypsy's compod at the end of the simulation. It's probable that only Bubba was used as an influence on this guy when this guy was being integrated into the training program. One from the Uprising Ascension novel, Huo Da, 
sounded bizarre. It was kind of like a trilobite, and it could propel itself through the water like it's squid. It had a frog-like tongue that would latch onto Jaegers. But the weirdest thing was that when this one was counted by Shaolin Rogue and Crimson Typhoon, it got split in half, and a whole new kaiju came out with three pairs of translucent blue dragonfly wings. Think Mothra, but with grasshopper legs. Anyway, the fight started out in the sea, covered in an area of 800 miles, and then trashed the financial district of Shanghai. The next to attack was Knifehead, the heavily armored goblin shark with four arms and a blowhole. Yes, a blowhole was the largest recorded Cat 3 to emerge since previous record holder Yamarashi. It went to smush Alaska, but all it ended up smushing were the life plans of these fishermen who would probably have nightmares for the rest of their natural goddamn lives. All this thanks to the interventions of Gypsy D and the sacrifice of pilot Yancey Beckett. Rest in peace. Atikon then emerged from the breach in November 2020 to attack Seoul and was the fifth kaiju taken down by Cherno Alpha after Reckoner Wraith. Tengu and Denjin, which is one I can't actually find out much about. There was Ceramander from the novelization that reared its ugly head in October 2021 to be killed in a battle with Coyote Tango and Striker Eureka. Again, not a lot is known about this one, but even less is known about Hidoi that was killed by Crimson Typhoon after it attacked Bangkok. All right, now this is a wild guess, mainly because the only, <laughs> this is the only panel we ever saw this dude in, but I'm putting Sulfuri in with the Cat 3s. We do know that Sulfuri attacked Seattle, killing the scientist known as Kai's family and destroying his business. This was set in Pacific Rim Amara, but was also told in flashbacks, so it must have happened earlier. Yeah, I, I reckon Cat 3. Then we had Bowface from Aftermath that attacked Santiago in Chile in December 2021. This chisel-jawed, one head short of a Ghidorah fucking dragon had large bony protrusions coming out of its tail and had bioluminescent energy pulsating in its mouth like it was going to atomic breath that shit. But Vulcan Spectre was like, talk to the hand. It was like, <laughs> and took it down. No bother. Vodyanoi attacked Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia in 2024 and it spat acid at Eden Assassin and took out its compod, destroying it before Cherno Alpha bludgeoned it to death with an iceberg. If he didn't say, this is just the tip of the iceberg before blamming him, then he ain't earning his money. It was described as a giant toad, this one. Although the acid quill was referred to as a Cat 4 in the Pacific Rim Blackout comic, it's safe to say that it was a Cat 3. It just feels more lightweight than any of the other Cat 4s we've seen. It's a bipedal beast, even though it has seven effing limbs, two arms, two legs, two tendril and a tail. It's tail being used for balance, while the tendril are used to lash out and whip, causing damage with their barbed tips. Now, this was the first kaiju known to be mass produced by the precursors, with several being seen throughout the course of the black. Another cat three from the black is the kaiju eel, a finned lizard with four small legs, which indicate that it's better suited for hunting in water rather than on land. It has the ability to reproduce, laying eggs, which it buries near, near its hunting grounds. The eggs it lays, however, are highly dangerous as a result of the kaiju's natural toxicity. Its yolks are able to burn straight through a human jaw. Bone Spurs category is unknown, but if I had to guess, I would put him at a three. It gave Hunter Vertigo a fair run for its money before being thrown by the Jaeger's shoulder-mounted ice cannon. It's a bipedal beast that has heavy forearms that can carry enough weight to send a Jaeger flying. And remember that guy from one of the X-Men movies that could generate these spikes, these barbs that he could then throw? Well, Bone Spur could do that, except the barb is probably the size of a tanker truck and can pierce pretty much any armor humans can engineer. Hammerhorn was another from Pacific Rim Blackout that was kind of just copperhead with these three horns on the top of its snout and a slightly different color. It emerged from the breach with Jawhide and Frightcrawler that we will talk about later. Hammerhorn died when Striker Berserker's chest rockets embedded into its back, blowing it to ash in a death that showed that it was surprisingly fragile when you considered that what punishment the other Cat 3s could take. I mean... Breach Wars had Razor Jaw, which looks like its head is very similar to Knife Head, but with a jaw that seems like it splits in two. It's yellow, so, you know, it's definitely not just Knife Head at all. Then there's Tarantulos, a ten-legged spider-like kaiju. It's sort of giant maggot with ten legs and these two huge glands on the side of its head. So you have to wonder if it can spit bile. It took down Vanguard Horizon before being killed by Striker Berserker's Blaze Gauntlets. These hands that heat up hot enough to melt through skull bone and brain and there. Breach Wars also had Abominator, who looks way too badass just to be a Cat 3. He looks like he should be a 4 or 5. He looks straight from one of the circles of hell, man. He looks like one of those dog statues from Ghostbusters. He did all the roids and they weren't enough, so he's pissed off and looking for more. 
Then you had Agitator, who looked like he had literal fins. Like, look here, look at his tail. Is he a fucking mermaid? But I'm guessing this one is some kind of aquatic kaiju. Now for the Cat 4s, and let's start with Torak. It attacked Mindano in July 2022, where Stryker took it out by creating a black hole out of seaweed and algae and krill, all held together by glittery shoelaces. No, listen, we don't know any details on this one, uh, nor do we know much about Tentalus, which was taken down by Crimson Typhoon using a pair of giant chopsticks or Bone Squid that attacked on July 30th, 2024 at Port Moresby where it was made into sushi by Striker Eureka. And I love this guy's name. It's like a paradox itself. Like a squid with bones, bone squid, a squid with bones, bone squid, squid. One that we have actually seen is Insurrector. Its most distinctive features were its wide horns that it also has smaller versions of on its back and this pointed blade-like lower jaw. This one appeared in 2024 to hit Santa Monica in California, first being sighted on the pier, causing Amara Namani to get separated from her family, just one of the many casualties of its rampage, which, which was eventually brought to a halt by Striker Eureka and Hydra Corinthian. Apparently an early working name for this guy was Sporkhead. I like it. Another that I'm throwing in here mainly because of the dates is... <laughs> Another that I'm throwing in here, mainly because of the date that it surfaced, was Hound, another of Strike Eureka's kills whilst defending the Australian city of Auckland. It featured in the Pacific Rim novelization, but beyond that, not a whole lot is known about it. Tyrannus is very much in the same boat, only featured in the novel, appeared some point in September 2024, attacked Queen Charlotte until it was killed by the one, the only, bucket-headed killing machine, Cherno Alpha. And you know what? I can't look at him the same way since I found out that his compod is in his chest and this whole thing. He's basically one of those chimneys from Nuclear Power Plant. Beantal emerged in August 2024 before being killed by Crimson Typhoon, as was Tailspitter in November 2024, and only 10 days later, Kojiyama that attacked the Bohai Sea before being taken down by a combination of Crimson and Striker Eureka. At least we have a picture of Rachnid here being backhanded by Striker Eureka, like, like he's just raining down all the fists on this bioluminescent bug. But Rachnid is said to have had 28 eyes and a jaw that's made up of 19 mandibles and a tiny little wormy tongue. He attacked Brisbane in 2024, leaving 4,000 dead in its wake. It's not confirmed that it was a Cat 4, but given that it came out of the breach in 2024, it's a safe bet. In October of the same year, we had a kaiju called Fiend show up and try its best to wipe Acapulco off the map, but again, strike a Rika to the rescue, according to the novel at least. So again, not a whole truckload of detail to go on here. Same could be said for Vermin, which was in the novel Pacific Rim Uprising Ascension. I haven't read that one, so I can't comment too much, but we do know that it attacked Medellin in Colombia, that it had the head of a hairless opossum, and that it balanced its body on a pair of long, scaly bird-like legs. You know what? I think this is a job for AI. What the f- Vulcan Spectre killed this thing by boring into its skull with its atomic drill, only to find a bunch of smaller parasites came burrowing out of the thing. Uh, until Strike Eureka lit him up with gas from a gas tanker. Again, official category not known, but as this is a prequel to Uprising, I'm guessing three or four. Then, Mutavor appeared on New Year's Day, with everyone still hungover, god damn it, in 2025. It breezed through the anti kaiju wall and went straight after the Sydney Opera House, walking on its hind legs with three eyes on both sides of its head and a bladed crest making up the top of its head. Oh, there you go, somebody put his head on upside down but it's also got these huge bladed structures on its back. Apparently, Mutavor's tail is split vertically about halfway through, so it can be used like a pair of scissors for giant arts and crafts, I guess. Uh, the PPDC quickly rescinded their decision to decommission Striker Eureka, which used its dirty brawl of fighting style to fend off the beast before detonating a salvo of rockets right in its face. Boop, boomers, go! <laughs> Part of its brain would later be used by Newt for experiments to determine the possibility of drifting with kaiju brains. What a great idea. Now, in I... Uh, now, in Aftermath, Mutavor killed Vulcan Spectre by ripping his head off. And in the Pacific Rim novelization, it killed not only Vulcan, but also Echo Saber. What a badass. Now, in Aftermath, Spinejackal, an upright walking multi mandible 360 vision having Freakazoid, also saw the Sydney Opera House and went, I hate expressionist architecture, and made its life's mission to f that shit up. Luckily, Vulcan Spectre and Striker Eureka were on hand to kick it in the nards and slice the top of its head off with a wind farm windmill. Later, the sisters of the kaiju would acquire its arm. And they were like, ooh, we got an arm, woo. In the novelization, 
He attacked Melbourne. Another awesome design that didn't get used was Simon Lee's Himantura that he describes as a cross between a stingray and a switchblade, and it takes its design cues from the precursors themselves. The designer joked that he would have made him a Cat 6 if he was allowed. Another awesome design that never made the cut was Bishop by a concept artist called Sanjo Kim and his work is amazing. I suggest you look him up if you're into art or creature design or whatever. But he created this cat 4 that was able to spit corrosive bile because of its unique stomach that could metabolize kaiju blue and use it in a highly corrosive projectile attack. It had an axe-like tail and razor-sharp claws on its larger outer arms but also a set of scythe-like smaller arms, presumably to strike anything that was unlucky enough to get pulled in that close. The creature could either rush an opponent or knock it off its feet and then blast Kaiju Blue into its face up close and personal like, or attack from range, taking a deep breath in, collecting enough bile to spray it across distances. The designer also made variants, look at this shit, a bulky quadruped named Smogger and my personal favorite, Ravager. Great job, buddy. But now, we're getting into the heavy hitters and Leatherback. Gorilla-like in physical stature, Leatherback's fists are like maces. The hard protrusions that cover them can tear through armor, smash through concrete. But they look like they kind of might get itchy sometimes. It draws strength from its rage and uses hit and run tactics to deliver massive blows and then tactically retreats for pizza or a slushy or whatever. The kaiju's most deadly trait is a large four-lobed organ on its back that can naturally charge and generate an electromagnetic pulse. Interestingly, Leatherback is the only kaiju that we see improvising weapons in the movie. I'd never noticed that before. His eyes are vulnerable to getting shot at with flares. Let's Duo Tachi next. I've spoken about this beast a few times on the channel before, and it gives us probably the most standout moment in the movie. But in brief, it's the first flying kaiju that we see, but according to Travis Beecham, not the only kaiju that can fly. Interesting. She also sports a long barbed tail with bony plates along her spine, as well as three prehensile pincers on the end of the tail. The tail is a potent weapon that can be used as a club or a claw against Jaegers and According to the novelization, Otachi's tail acts independently of the rest of her body after it's severed by Gypsy Danger. Like imagine if it slithered off, got some pizza, met another severed tail, they fell in love, had baby severed tails and lived happily ever. It also seems like her pain threshold appears to be much greater than other kaiju. One example being that even after losing her tail, Otachi still steadily flew into the atmosphere while carrying a Jaeger in her talons. Nah biggie. Hardcore! Raiju is a crocodilian kaiju whose head itself is a tripartite jaw that encases the creature's bioluminescent head for protection. Its feet are bent, enabling it to swim quicker through the water, and according to Tendo Choi, Raiju was the fastest kaiju on record prior to the appearance of Slatten, and was apparently, according to internet, the heaviest Category 4 kaiju in Pacific Rim. Scunner is a broad and stocky, almost bull-like monster. It's two curved horns jutting out of its head, acting as a battering ram against armored opponents like the Jaegers. Its ability to work in tandem with other kaiju makes it particularly dangerous. Like Slatten, Trespasser, and Knifehead, Scunner's primary arms are actually two fused arms ending in these three-digit claws, and apparently, according to internet, uses the same basic CG body as Knifehead and Trespasser. It's reportedly the largest Category 4 in the movie. That was until Shrike Thorn came along to attack Mega Tokyo in 2035, the only of the uprising kaiju to be able to run on all fours, with a head shaped like a hammerhead shark adorned with multiple blue eyes. Shrikethorn can produce plasma that it can use as an offensive weapon and carry sharp bioluminescent spines on both of its tails which can be launched. Remind you of anyone? Else? Why am I talking about this guy so much? Hakuja can burrow at astonishing speeds using its armored head to smash through bedrock, pushed forward by its immensely powerful legs. Its muscles are reported to be strengthened by its molten blood, keeping its blood pressure at insanely high levels to keep its muscles saturated. Another one from Uprising Ascension was Scepted. This one attacked Ecuador, and when Romeo Blue, Puma Real, and Diablo Intercept engaged it, it began to unzip its head, splitting and unfolding, and spraying a toxic gas everywhere. Then, we got Copperhead, who appeared at some point post-2035. Whereas most kaiju would head for the nearest city or human infrastructure, this guy would roam the outback until alerted of the presence of the Shadow Basin by Haley Travis, where it got savage and killed pretty much everyone. Even though it was killed, apparently Copperhead managed to have young 
with three surviving at the point that Travis and Haley meet Meet the Bunyip Man. Jawhide, as I mentioned before, was a bipedal, broad-bodied crocodilian kaiju that appeared out of one of the multiple breaches at the same time as Hammerhorn and Frightcrawler. The armor covering its maw appears to augment its jaw's biting strength that can crush and puncture the thickest of armors. As Paladin Tornado found out as Jawhide ripped off its arm and then crushed its head in its jaws. Serrataback was a large, six-eyed cat four with three rows of eyes for better fucking death possession, I guess, I don't fucking know. There was Shadow Kuro, which looked like he needed to lay off the Big Macs, which actually reminds me of those nightmare turkeys from Dark Crystal, what were they called again, the sepsis? And Blood Seether, who definitely gets the award for most metal sounding name. This guy seems to have an EMP pulse, kind of like Leatherbag did. All right, let's get serious with category five and the ones that you probably already know about with, start with Slatten. The most powerful kaiju ever encountered by humanity at the time of its appearance, the precursors obviously got their big guns out to protect the portal between worlds from destruction. It's also the most intelligent of any kaiju ever encountered apparently, being able to do math and write poetry, so on, so forth, probably. And has lethal physical attributes, such as a triple tail that has massive spike on each end, which can spin and whip around, and an, and an extendable spiked chest protrusion that it, that it can impale Jaegers on by grabbing them and being like, Ah, oh, come here, get impaled on my chest! It can emit a sonic blast even underwater, even after his throat had been slashed. And oh yeah, it can resist a nuclear blast. Oh, and just a fun fact, have you ever noticed that it's never actually referred to by the name Slatten in the movie? I never actually noticed that. Raijin, the most powerful of the kaiju to attack Mega Tokyo in 2035, Raijin has been described as an electric predator with special moves coined the electric jaw, the morphic skull, and the shredding bite. Its most distinctive feature will probably be its, its Venus flytrap-like head that has an inner layer that's protected by a thick outer shell. The plates also serve as a plasmic jaw, which can also be closed to defend itself and absorb kinetic energy from weapons used by the Jaegers. But it can also absorb kinetic energy from attacks and use the absorbed energy to power up its own attacks. Its hide is durable enough to withstand it getting numerous buildings dropped on it, but of course, the most astounding thing about it is its ability to fuse with its kaiju brethren that we will come back to later. Then there was the kaiju named Crab Cakes that we only got to see the quickest glimpse of. We never got to see its bottom half at all as it was cut in half when the breach collapsed as it was halfway through, making it the only kaiju to ever die in a breach collapse. But director Stephen DeKnight stated that the lower half looks like a lobster? I don't know, maybe he was joking. Was he joking? Like a lobster? He also said that it was either a cat 4 or potentially a 5. So I'm going to give it the benefit of a doubt and make it a 5, mainly because we have loads of cat 4s already. Then we have Frightcrawler, a cat 5 that scuttled out of the breach at some point post-2035 and was pretty unique in its design, looking like one of those freaky big centipede things. It's covered in thick red armor and has what's known as bilateral symmetry, which means that it has a head on both ends of its body. These heads can consist of an extensive oral cavity with four tooth prongs around it and the back of the heads possess three pairs of eyes on rectangular eye stalks. I don't know how that works and honestly I'm not sure I really want to know but it managed to stay combat effective even after being cut in half by Striker Berserker and it's not until Striker rips his half to pieces and Vanguard blasts the other half to bloody chunks that they finally put it down. From Breach Wars we had Menacer who was one of the three Cat Fives in the game. And this guy looked awesome. He was bulky, he had horns to the side of his head, ridged bones on the top of his head. His skin didn't quite cover his teeth. He looked brutal. Then there was Volcano and Wrathbone, which gives us six category fives. Seven if you count crab cakes. But then the black came along and turned the dials all the way up to 11 with Cat 6 Breacher, which is interesting because apparently the Sarasawa scale was never meant to go above 5. And I guess it does now because this is a colossal juggernaut, a freight train of muscle and bony armor that is just a bipedal wrecking ball that rips poor Atlas Destroyer to pieces. It's been theorized though that this might not be the first Cat 6 the humans have come across as they didn't seem all that surprised to see it. Breacher was less resistant to nuclear blasts than its predecessors though as it was vaporized by Atlas self-destruct 
constructing its nuclear core. I've seen that explained online as like when the PPDC moved away from using nuclear powered Jaegers, the precursors were like, ah, we don't need to bother making them as resistant to nuclear blasts anymore. I don't know. Do you buy that? I don't really buy that. But if you thought the dials couldn't go any higher, well, now we are at the highest possible echelons any higher than this. And I'll start having to use letters and little squiggles and factors and shit to express just how large a number we're dealing with here. In fact, that I'm just going to call it category fuck knows. And this is a category of one, ladies and gents, solely occupied by the never before or since seen Mega Kaiju. If you want more detail on this guy, I did a who would win between this guy and the Breacher that I'll link to down below. But in brief, a nightmarish fusion of, Sh of Shrikethorn, Raijin, and Hakuja, and countless smaller robotic hybrid kaiju. It has six legs, two tails, god knows how many brains, a shit ton of 20 foot long teeth, and all of the abilities of its component kaiju. This guy is by far and away the most powerful kaiju ever seen in the Pacific Rim universe. For reals. But then there's also a bunch of hybrid kaiju. First, we've got the hybrid drones, which are a kaiju brain linking to the precursor hive mind and providing some sort of mini consciousness that would control rapidly generated kaiju biology and musculature and essentially put the precursors firmly in the driving seat and augmenting these things already impressive firepower. Then we have Obsidian Fury, which was the original prototype of these, as well as Apex, which could well be the most powerful creature to have ever existed in this universe. I've talked about these guys a lot on the channel already, so check the links below. All right, you guys, let's leave that there. Make sure you're letting me know which your favorite kaiju is. Let me know if I've missed any. I'm going to go back to working on Transformers factions and most powerful Transformers Titans and loads of other cool stuff too. But make sure you let me know if there's any other aspect of the Pacific Rim universe you want looked at. I've got to take my meds, so I will see you very soon for the next one. Thank you very much for watching and cheerio, bye.